I trust most of you have just so many questions. And in your defense, so did I. Because how does one wind up having a locomotive, a steam locomotive, underneath the Wells Fargo Center? Now, brief recap, the Wells Fargo Center is actually the second tallest building in Jacksonville, Florida, and it's one of the landmark buildings of that city. It was initially the Independent Life Building, and it was also formerly known as the Modus Building. Wells Fargo actually acquired the naming rights in 2011, so that name alteration is fairly recent, but the building was completed in 1974, and the building is, well, it's, it's a skyscraper. It's an office building. There's really nothing important about that, but that doesn't really explain the locomotive thing. First of all, how do we even know there's a locomotive down there? Well, I can explain that. And this story comes firsthand from one of the construction workers who was working on the building when it was being built. See, the building, and by extension its foundation, was constructed in an area very close to the water. And whenever you build a foundation for a large building, especially a skyscraper, it has to be fairly deep into the ground in order to stabilize it. The area they were working in was excavated to a depth of about 20 or 30 feet. During the process, they had to drive hundreds of I-beam pilings, as well as hollow pile casings, into the ground, using heavy-duty drills and pile drivers. And these things are no joke. The drill bits alone cost $10,000 a piece, and that was in the 70s. But at one point during their drilling, as they were drilling through the bedrock they were dealing with, they wound up striking metal. Really sturdy metal, and apparently it made just the worst noise in the universe, which I believe metal on metal is not a pleasant sound generally. The workers went down and started digging by hand to figure out what the heck they just hit, and they discovered a locomotive. A large steam locomotive, chillin', in the ground, underneath where they were trying to build the skyscraper. Now you may be saying, well if they found it, did they get it out of there? Yeah, see, about that? Uh, no. No they did not. Here's the problem. The job had to be halted while they called their bosses and the owners of Independent Life, who were financing the construction of the building in the first place, and the concern was that if the media got a hold of the fact they'd found a historical object in the construction site, the entire project would be halted by the local government and it would cost them valuable time and money. So instead, they took a few artifacts off the locomotive, including its bell. Where they went or who with is a mystery lost to time. And they proceeded to lay the foundation around the locomotive, burying it permanently underneath the skyscraper where it still is. Now on one hand, I do understand their position. This type of project isn't cheap, and these guys have to earn a paycheck. If the construction stops, the construction workers don't get paid, and the Independent Life Corporation has to sit around on their hands while it's decided what to do with this historical artifact. But on the other hand, hey, 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 this is a piece of history, and, uh, it, it, it's also a mystery. It's unclear how the locomotive got down there in the first place. The theory is that it was lost during the Great Fire of 1901. That fire swept through Jacksonville. And it's one of the worst disasters in Florida history. It's also the third largest urban fire in the United States, right behind the Great Chicago Fire and the 1906 San Francisco Fire. 146 city blocks, consisting of over 2,000 buildings, were lost in the blaze, and 10,000 residents were left homeless. Now, why would this fire result in losing a locomotive in the ground? Well, that's because during the fire, the waterfront, where the railroad lines operated very close to, was actually destroyed. And a lot of things, including rail cars and possibly a locomotive, were sunk and never recovered. The area where the Independent Life Building was being constructed used to be where the water line was. So it's not unreasonable to think that a locomotive would have been lost during the blaze, fallen into the water, and then just kind of forgotten about. And in fact, I did attempt to identify what locomotive it could possibly be. The source in the story seems to think it looked like this, but this one appears to have a set of trailing wheels, and that would make it a 462 Pacific, and I find that unlikely. Pacifics were in operation in 1901 when this locomotive was allegedly lost, because again, that's the theory, but they weren't nearly as common as they would later become in about 10 years from then. And based on the fact that the railroad in question was probably under the jurisdiction of the Atlantic Coastline Railroad, and the fact that the vast majority of their steam fleet of this time were 10-wheelers, I would bet that the locomotive in question is probably a 10-wheeler. 
though the archives of the Atlantic Coast Line Railroad do not mention them ever losing a steam locomotive in the water. Not one time. Though, if it was lost during that fire, it's possible it was seen as a minor issue compared to everything else that was destroyed. So it may have simply been lost in the shuffle as they struggled to rebuild. This locomotive is still under what is now known as the Wells Fargo Center, because Independent Life and the construction company they hired couldn't afford to waste time and money getting it out of there. Therefore, it is now a permanent fixture underneath the building as a part of the building's foundation. And you may be saying, well, can we get it out of there? <laughs> Absolutely not. Not now. I mean, are you kidding me? Compared to every other locomotive I've talked about, this is easily the least accessible one. And not because it's very deep or anything, but because it's underneath a major landmark building in a major American city. In order to access it now, you'd basically have to either move or tear down a large skyscraper. And perhaps you're saying, well, can we just drill inside the building's basement and get down into the foundation and get to it that way? Well, I mean, technically you can, but I'm willing to bet there's at least a handful of structural engineers watching this that might be able to explain why that is a horrible idea for so, so many reasons. So unless at some point the city of Jacksonville or another corporation decides to tear down and replace this building, it is likely that this locomotive will forever be lost to time, and we may never know exactly which one it is, just that it's there, still underneath a skyscraper. This kind of story doesn't come across the desk of normal people. I just want to point that out. Till next time, this is Darkness. Habitual Lafond, farewell.